Chapter 33. The next morning, Flora had to push her way through a heavy blanket of fresh snow. She shook it off and tried to ignore her grumbling stomach. To her surprise, Sophia was sitting a short ways off. She didn't turn around when Flora called her name, so Flora asked, what's for breakfast? Sophia still didn't answer. Her tail swished a half circle in the snow. Flora looked around in every direction. A cold, hard lump grew in her throat. Sophia? Flora tried to swallow and couldn't. Her voice shook. Where are the sled tracks? Where are our tracks? Gone, said Sophia, covered over last night. Flora looked out again, unbelieving. All of her deep floundering from the day before had been completely cleaned up. The land was spotless and smooth. Flora felt like a tiny dot, she and Sophia, the only two things alive on the face of the earth. Sophia stepped daintily up to Flora, shaking the snow from her paws. What did, why did you come back? asked Flora. I'm sticking with my team, Sophia said, and looked down. I know I said sorry yesterday, but I um, never properly said thank you for helping me with those rats. How do you know I wasn't trying to get in good with Big Amos? Flora asked. You kept helping me even after he chained you up again. Sophia looked long and hard into Flora's eyes. Flora had never been able to stare back at a cat for long, even when it was a friendly stare from Luna. But this time, it was the cat that looked away eventually. I've been corrupted, Sophia said. I used to have unfailing cat common sense. I hardly recognize myself anymore. What kind of cat takes up with dogs and pigs? But I can't help it. I'm a team member now, so I came back. Flora smiled. We need a plan. No plan is going to get us out of this mess, Sophia sounded as tired and hungry as Flora felt. We're doomed. If Oscar doesn't come back the exact way he went, we're finished. Flora nudged Sophia with her nose. Cats are good at keeping clean, she said. Dogs are good at running forever without getting tired. And I think that pigs are good at being optimistic and not giving up even when things are really bad. So today we're going to do things the pig way, okay? Flora explained her idea. She and Sophia would walk in a straight line away from each other until the middle of the day. Then they'd turn around, follow their paths back, and meet in the middle again. This way, Oscar and Aylric were sure to come across the tracks on their return trip. Flora began to walk. It was no easier than before. She knew that she would go she knew that she would go more slowly through the deep snow than her lighter friend, but she also knew that her tracks would be deeper and easier for Oscar to recognize. When Flora turned around at midday, her heart lifted as she headed toward Sophia. She still couldn't believe that crazy cat had come back in the night to find her. If Sophia had followed the sled tracks before they disappeared, she might have located Oscar and Aylric, which would have meant finding food and rescue. She'd had the chance to save herself. It wasn't in her nature to make a decision for the sake of a friend, but that was what it seemed she had done. At the end of the day, Flora and Sophia met in the middle again. When Flora saw how tired Sophia was, instead of throwing her tired body down as she wanted to, Flora dug, slowly dug out a fresh snow cave. She and Sophia collapsed together without a word. For that, Flora was thankful. She didn't want to have to hide her disappointment. She had silently hoped that Elric and Oscar would have shown up by now. Flora closed her eyes and had one happy thought. So far, there didn't appear to be any wind or snowfall tonight to undo their hard work. Chapter 34 The next morning, it wasn't the cold or the hunger pangs that woke Flora. It wasn't a soft meow or the delicious smell of food in her dreams. It was a big, sloppy lick from a big, sloppy tongue. Oscar, Flora squealed and jumped up in a spray of powder. Sophia yowled in surprise at being woken this way, but she soon joined Flora in dancing around their friend. Elric stood smiling a short way off. He was still hooked to the sled while Oscar's line lay in the snow. I knew you would find us, shouted Flora. I knew you'd come back the same way you went. Oscar's wagging tail flew up. What are you two doing out here? Looking for you, Sophia, ran with her tail high to Aylric and climbed his legs until she was in his arms. Aylric laughed. We were afraid you wouldn't be strong enough to make it. Flora bumped Oscar's chin with her nose and got another lick in return. You don't know how tough an old dog can be, said Oscar. 
but Flora thought he, had, he looked run down, exhausted even. We wanted to help you get the food, but we lost your tracks, said Flora. Well, it's a good thing you left some tracks yourself, because otherwise we would have passed you right by. We started back only today, and the sled is a lot heavier. Flora held her breath for a moment. You found the food? She looked over at the sled, and her mouth began watering. Aylrick had unwrapped the load and was giving Sophia something. Then he waded through the deep snow to deliver two frozen fish to Flora. Those two fish were the sweetest things she could ever remember tasting. Aylrick stayed close while she ate, and when she was done, bent down and hugged her. You are one crazy pig, you know that? You disappear and then show up at the wildest times. What are you doing out, out here? Aylrick walked back to the sled, tossed Flora two more fish, and then whistled. Oscar trudged his way to, pull, to his pole line. Aylrick hooked him to the harness and they started out, the boy and dog side by side, and the sl sled behind with Sophia on top. They could only creep. Flora watched for another moment and then plowed through the snow until she was out in front of Oscar. The food had revived her and she was determined to be helpful. She was going to make a path for them. She knew getting through the deep powder would be even harder for Oscar with the heavy load. Every step she took packed the snow down and made it easier for her friend. Knowing this made the work easier for her too. But being homemade, the sled didn't slide as smoothly as it should have. Sometimes Aylrick stashed his pull line in the food box and dropped behind to push. When they finally passed the stretch of deep drifts and were back on more solid snow, the company stopped for a breather. Flora made her way to where Sophia had hopped down and she was watching over Oscar. He hadn't bothered to wait for Aylrick to take off the rope before collapsing. Flora was alarmed to hear the rattling in his throat again. Oscar, you don't sound so good, she said. He didn't answer. He was too busy trying to catch his breath. Aylrick knelt down by the dog's side. Here you go, boy. Let's get that line off of you. He unfastened the rope and rubbed Oscar's side for a few minutes. Then he went to check on the food boxes. Pulling is like medicine, panted Oscar. I think you might be getting a little too much medicine on this trip, said Sophia. Can't you take it easier? Oscar didn't say more, and all too soon Aylrick came back to hook him up. The dog struggled to his feet, but before they came to the field of ice crystals, Flora hadn't noticed the leather booties on Oscar's feet until now. But there they were, just as Sophia had said. The icy crust that supported the crystals was thick enough to hold Flora and Oscar's weight, but the much heavier sled kept breaking through, causing the runners to end up stuck in the soft snow underneath. When this happened, Aylrick had to yank the sled back through the crust and find a new path. They would travel only a short distance before the sled would break through again. There was nothing Flora could do to help. Finally, Elric leaned against the sled. Night's coming anyway. Fumbling forward, he unhooked, or stumbling forward, he unhooked the unhooked Oscar, who just lay on the snow with his sides heaving. Elric brought out a tent and a small stove. Soon supper was cooking, and Flora could almost taste the warm fish stew. It might have been a happy time, Flora thought. They were, re they were rescuers coming back to save the day. They had enough to eat, but there was no cheer in the small camp. Flora and Sophia stayed near Oscar, who didn't move from where they had dropped. When supper was ready, he wouldn't eat. His throat was still rattling. Come on, boy, I'm depending on you, Aylrick coaxed. You're my engine. I didn't work you too hard, did I? When it was time to sleep, Aylrick carried him inside the tent. Flora poked her head through the opening. The boy had made a bed of blankets for Oscar next to his own bed. You'll feel better tomorrow, buddy, he said. Sophia stepped into the tent and curled up at the dog's side. Aylrick crawled inside the blankets and patted the space on the other side of him. Come on, pig, there's room for everyone, and this tent needs all the body heat it can get. Flora lay beside Aylrick, thinking about the captain. How was he doing without the body heat of a pig to warm him? Then she listened to the rough sound of Oscar's breathing a long time before she went to sleep.